y'all. Hey. Hey, friend. Hey. Girl, guess what? I'm back on your screen. Oh, baby, how you doing? You know, I'm gonna come right to the chase, huh? Some women were made. But me, myself, I like to think that I was created for a special purpose. So look, listen, y'all. In today's video, I will be coming to y'all with a story time about my oldest son. I don't know how I'm gonna get through this story without getting emotional and how I can get through this story without putting everything out because I just don't want to do that. So anyway, hey y'all, hey again. Look, listen, as you all know, I have five children. I have four boys and one little girl. My oldest son is 25 years old. He is my oldest boy and when you're looking at me, you're looking at my oldest son. He look exactly like me. We are twins. <laughs> so uh, my nerves kind of bad so that's why I got my little pillow right here. I can kind of play with it a little bit. And look, listen. It's some stuff I left out in the tips video about how to start a YouTube. I just want to tell y'all really, really quick. I forgot to offer this advice. This is not no tip advice. When you have a camera, I don't know, phone or whatever, I always try to keep in mind to look right into the lens. And if it's your phone, I guess like right in the middle where it's like you connecting with your audience or whoever's watching your video. Because look, listen, sis, 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 sis. Take my camera, I got the viewfinder over here. If I'm constantly talking like, girl, so yeah, I went to Home Goods today. I purchased a lot of items. This haul is gonna be awesome. And I, like, sis, who you talking to? Like, I'm not over there, I'm over here. So try not to look over. Always try to make the eye contact with the lens. If you have that vlog camera, where the, the viewfinder flips up this way, try not to look up at it because you will be talking like up like this in your video and versus down like this when you're talking to the people. Like you kind of want to make some type of connection. So I forgot to throw that out there. I really want to do because I watch a lot of videos. When you should be looking here, but they all over here because girl, yeah, and so on, so And girl, uh-huh. Nah, baby, it ain't no uh-huh. And this ain't where it's at with you looking over here at that viewfinder. So... <laughs> I thought I'd throw that out there. There's some other stuff that I thought about that I should have said and I forgot what it was, so forgive me. Um, if I think about it, I'll say it and then add it with this. But anyway, yeah, like I said, my son, he's 25 years old. Um, my son has been out of my home since he was 17 years old. My son is gay. I remember when my son was growing up when he was younger, a lot of people used to always say that my son was feminine, that he was gonna be gay, and I used to always get so mad and be like, no, he's not. You know, even though I was, you know, I didn't never come with an answer. So what if he is? Oh, well, I'm still gonna love him the same. I used to just always say, no, he's not. Even though I saw signs of my son, you know, having feminine ways, like when they were younger, when the boys were younger, he would take a shirt and he would make three ponytails with the sleeves, two in the front, and then the back, he would bunch it up. He would do things like that. He used to always play in my heels and stuff like that. But you know, I just thought it was a boy thing because my son grew up around nothing but women when he was born it was just me him and my mommy and so we were always together we were like this when mommy moved we moved when mommy got in the car we got in the car when mommy went to go see granny we was there when mommy went to the grocery store we were there we went everywhere with my mommy and <laughs> i had him when i was 18 years old and um he was just always around women my aunties and on dad's side all of them they it was no really no men around yeah and as he grew up i thought he, he was wasn't going to be gay because he was just doing some boy thing a lot of boy things getting into trouble beating up everybody but my son really loved and adored me like all my boys do but he was just so fascinated with me he loved me so so much he was always you look cute you know little stuff like that once he came out the closet it, it turned from you you cute to you look cute you know what i'm saying and you know, so look, listen, uh, <laughs> he came out the closet at around 17 years old, y'all. Again, this was an incident. I was in the bathroom. I was curling my hair and he came and gave me a letter. I knew what that letter was. And then he came back, he asked me, did I read it? And I said, no, nah. I knew that's what it was. And the letter was something like, basically, I'm gay. If you don't want me around your son with my gayness, if that's the word, gayness, is that a word? If you don't want me around your son with my gayness, I can just go to 
people and places that's gonna love me for me or something like that. And so girl, I blew up. Now looking back, I kind of wished I had handled that part of it a little bit differently, but I still feel the same way if that makes sense. So, you know, I'm like, really? Me? You think there's someone out there better that's gonna love you better and do more for you than me? No, brother. No, 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 no. No, my son. So girl, I had opened the door I was like, well, if you think there's plenty more people and places you can go that's gonna love you more than me, then go ahead. I opened the door and he went. I swear, he went, girl. He never came back. And so when he came back, you know, he was all girl. He was like, I guess that's what you call a cross dresser. Um, he was dressing like a girl and wearing makeup, was getting his nails done, looking just like me. Her was always on fleek, like looking just like me, a girl. It was like my daughter, like my, my twin. He looked at just like me, girl. It was crazy. And so um, he came back, we you know we was cool or whatever. And you know, he had a whole bunch of his friends that was just like him, that were gay just like him. And um, they would come over and talk to me and you know, everything was just good, peaches and cream and stuff. And so I talked to him, I, I got him back home or whatever, y'all. I tried to get him back in school so he can graduate. I think he was like a junior at that time. But I enrolled him back in school and he was supposed to go back to school. He had left my home again. He had never came back. And I did not see him any anymore. Now I'm really making a long story short. So another time he left, he was gone for a long while. And then one day out of nowhere, I got a phone call and it was someone from this place called Youth in Need. And they said that he was there, he wanted to talk to me. I'm like, oh my God. So wherever he was living, the people got kicked out. And so he ended up going there. And so we was talking and back and forth. I convinced him like, okay, baby, where you at? I'm coming to get you. So I went and got my son and brought him home again. And I enrolled him in school once again. And then he ended up leaving again. I'm like, oh my God. And so it was just so much I couldn't do because at the time he was 17, I would call the police and they was like, there's nothing you can do because he's 17. He can leave your home, but you're still responsible for him until he's 18. Really? How is it that he can leave, but I'm still responsible for him until he's 18? The law is so stupid, so freaking stupid. Just dumb. And so he ended up leaving again and, um, And the next time I heard about my son, my daughter, Nudie, y'all met her, y'all seen her in one of my uh, latest vlogs. And she's very popular because she does hair. When I say she's popular on social media and, you know, Facebook, Instagram, and all uh, Snapchat, she's just very popular. And uh, one day someone took a picture with this homeless guy and she posted it and Nudie saw it and it was my son. Oh my gosh, she flipped out she flipped out come to find out my son had been living on the streets girl i had no idea if that's what he was doing um you know usually when someone leaves they got they got a place to go and uh but i don't know what happened still to this day i don't know the story behind that he was living on the streets girl we was looking and searching around searching around and found we found out where he had been staying me and my husband used to go out and look for him and look for him and we got him brought him back and by this time his mind he he, he schizophrenia uh but you know we we didn't know we didn't know he was schizophrenia you know because it usually kick in in the ages of uh i think 18 to 20 i forget i forgot what the doctor told me and so by this time he kind of like kind of losing his mind but he really wasn't he was still kind of there and so me and my husband brought him back home girl we went shopping bought him clothes we brought him some cigarettes because he came back smoking and you know we were just trying to make him just comfortable and you know at home or whatever i said husband my ex-husband and he has been out there so he was used to living on the streets or whatever so you know i'm trying to get him to take baths he would go in there and he wouldn't get in the water he'll just change the clothes and pretend that he's taking these showers and so one day the little girl the princess oh god was like i had told her to go in the front room and do something for me and she had made the statement she was like i don't want to go in there because i don't want to smell like 
you know, her brother's name or whatever. She mentioned his name. I don't think I want to mention his name. I hope I ain't never mentioned it before. And so oh, that just broke my heart. And finally I goes in there. I'm trying to talk to him. I was like, son, you need to go in there and take a shower. And he was arguing with me, going back and forth, had this attitude. And since he had been out there, he had developed this attitude. My son has never been disrespectful to me, but he was that day. And, um, I was like, you need to go take a bath. And he was like, I ain't going to take a bath. I was like, you need to go take a bath. I was like, you can't keep sitting here and, and you know, m making the house smell the way it smells. You need to go take a shower. Girl, that little boy started getting up, putting on his shoes and stuff. And I was like, where is you going? He was like, I'm leaving y'all. It was around Christmas. Every time I, I get my son and bring him home, he always run and it's always around the holidays and he always run away. And uh, in December, right, you know, either right before the day or after the day, did the same thing last year, my birthday, it was my birthday, but anyway, I'll get to that. And so I was like, where's you going? He said, I'm leaving. So I said to my son, I was like, you would rather go live on the street than just to go in there and to take a bath? He was like, yeah, I'll sleep on the curb before uh, I stay here and take a bath or some stuff like that. And I was like, really? Y'all, it was pouring down raining. And so he grabbed this stuff, nothing but the shoes and ran out that house. So I'm chasing him, it's raining, I'm wet. My husband ended up coming home right after he did. And I was like, please go get him, see if you can get him. And I was like, here, just give him these cigarettes because I knew he smoked and you know, I was just still trying to find a way to like, please him or make him happy. He ran away again, y'all. And then we end up finding him again. We brought him back home again. And this time when we brought him home, it was kind of like in the summertime, we brought him home. Now he's talking to himself, girl. We'll be laughing out loud. And I didn't know no better. I didn't know what was going on. I used to ask him, like, son, who you talking to? He'd be like, nobody. And I'm looking around, it was so hot outside. He was sitting outside, dripping wet. And I was like, son, come in the house and you know, get some air, get on the center. He was like, I ain't hot. But girl was ringing wet. I was just like, this is crazy. This is so crazy. So um, he ended up leaving again. And then another time, my ex-husband and I and my son, the one that's in the Navy, took out to go look for him. And my son spotted him as we was driving back. He was like, there you go right there. Just He was just sitting there, just sitting there. I told my son to get out, you know, because I didn't want him to run if he saw me, y'all, because he was just so mad at me. Like, everything that had happened to him was my fault. And y'all might not understand because it's one thing that I got to leave out that I don't want to put his business out there. And it's like he blamed me for everything, you know. So by this time, my husband and I got out the car, girl. He saw me. He burned out. He broke camp, y'all. We could not find him nowhere. I don't know where he went. I don't know if he'd been living out there on the streets for so long. He just know his way around. Girl, we couldn't find him nowhere. And my son had told me, he said that I don't want to see her. I don't want to talk to her. Oh my God, I just started crying like a baby. And so, um, that was another time. I mean, then one of the times my husband went out looking for him and my husband had gave him money and the phone number because I was like, I just give him my phone number. If he ever need me, he can always call me. But my husband said he threw the phone number um, down on the ground and my husband said he picked it up and he just left. And so, fast forward, I'm not with my ex-husband anymore. So then Gil and I started taking to the streets trying to find him here recently, starting back from last year, my birthday. Family and friends will always see him and they always call me and let me know that they seen him, you know, what he's looking like, if they talked to him, if he gave him money. So that's how I always knew where he was. And um, I'll go looking for him and some days I will find him and some days I wouldn't. It, it never been a time that I, found him and didn't bring him back home. Fast forward, y'all saw him in a couple of my vlogs sometime last year, Doc's appointment and all that kind of stuff. That's another time that Gail, Gail and I had found him. We brought him home, we cleaned him up, girl. I cut his hair, he wouldn't let me at first. I, I put my foot down. It ain't no such thing as Noah and it's not a such thing as you gonna run because you don't want me to do it. So I cut his hair real good. He got real good curly hair when you wetted it curl up. So the way I cut it didn't matter if I had messed it up anyway, which I really did mess it up. But I cut his hair. I had got him to a point where he would listen to me, where he had started taking his baths and stuff. And I just thought I had my son. And during this time, he had stayed home a while, a long while. Um, 
a long while this time so i'm like dang i got my son so i was trying to figure out ways to help him get him help or whatever and so um you know i started taking him to those doctor's appointments as y'all saw i was trying to get him hooked up with social security and just a whole bunch of things that i was trying to do so he got back into this he he didn't want to uh, cooperate this is what i'm saying about the system my son been diagnosed that he's schizophrenia he's not in a, his right frame of mind but they wouldn't allow me to make no decisions for him that's stupid like i hate the system i hate it i hate it i hate it and so the social security people let me get your answer the social security people called and they was asking questions and he couldn't he can't hold a whole conversation anymore he just can't he just can't so she asking him asking him these questions and he couldn't answer them so i tried to answer him she like well ma'am I need his permission that I can talk to you. I'm like, lady, don't you see he can't even answer you? Like, how is he gonna give you this permission? He was popping in and out. So I was trying to talk to him. I was like, do you hear her son? Tell her that I, she could talk to me. He was like, no, no, no. I'm sorry, this is how he talked. He was like, nah. So I'm like, oh my God. And I'm still trying to convince this lady. As you can see, he, he's not comprehending. And so, yeah, he just was, his mind is all the way gone. I took him to a doctor's appointment. And so they asking questions. They asking him questions. He could not answer them. They were asking me questions. So I'm responding, giving them answers. But when we got back home, his mind, well, he was arguing with me in his mind. He was like, keep my name out your mouth, point blank, period. Keep my name out your mouth, point blank, period. Point blank, period. Point black period. Point black period. Point black period. He just kept saying it, right? But I knew he was talking about me because we had just got back from the doctor's apartment. And so the TV would be on and he would be arguing with the people on the TV going off on them. Like they talking to him. He would have a full-fledged organ with the TV. Talking straight, talking to the TV. And so then one day he was like, where my little sister money at? Where my little sister money at? That's my little sister, right? You my little sister, right? You better get my money. Get my little sister her money. Get my little sister money. But he was, something was happening. Whatever was taking place, he was talking to them on the TV. And that's how far gone my son is. But they would not allow me to help because he's over 18. Sorry, y'all. I had to stop and go answer the door. Somebody was knocking on my door. So look, listen. Yeah, he was just so far gone and they wouldn't. You know, let me help him in no way because he was over 18. Uh, he don't remember anybody. The only person he remember was Princess. He called her Tink. We used to call her Tinky Mom. Daddy started that and that's what he remember. And I told him about my mom passing. He didn't know who she was. I was like, you remember who your grandma? She was like, mm mm. But he remember Princess. He loved her so much. He loved that little girl. And he didn't remember anybody. And so anyway, that day on my birthday, y'all, he ran and he ran so hard so we i'm chasing him I, I got scared i called gail i ain't know what to do so i ran i chased him down the street i come back i ran i jumped in my car i was like son why are you doing this i said why would you do me like this i was like please come back i said whatever it is we could talk about it and he was like no no I was like i'm your mama why would you do me like this on my birthday he was like you're not you're not you're not you're not he just kept saying he just keep on saying stuff repeating you're not you're not you're not i was like yes i am i'm your mom i was like please come back he was like nah so i called gail i was like yeah, i don't know what to do he running he running the street she was like call the police and say tell them that he running in front of cars and stuff and i did guys oh my god we called the police on him they took him away took him to the um the psych water i was like thank you jesus so now y'all i'm thinking i'm gonna get a hold on my son get a good grip on him y'all they still won't let me make decisions for him they put him on a 72 hour hold and they end up keeping him longer because um they were working trying to help me get him into place but it was just only so much that i can do and girl finally i got some help finally got him to a place where i can get him into a place so uh, it was actually like a housing program type thing and so they the the hospital put him in the cab and the guy that was supposed to help him was supposed to meet him there at 10 o'clock 10 a.m and i was at work and so he was late and didn't get there in time and they let got my son there the cab let him out girl and he just went on about his business and i i haven't seen him since and so yeah he's out there somewhere i don't know where this is so cute look at that white that white is so pretty ain't it yeah i like the white okay that ain't what this is about 
but I haven't seen my son since and I left a whole lot out, you know, because like I said, I just, I just can't. So I made a long story short. So that's where I am with my son. I even tried to get him in a nursing home, which they wouldn't do that because they say he had to be 25 years old, which now he is. Cause once he's in a place, he's content. Like he was content in the hospital. And y'all that day that he went to the psych ward, drove up there, I followed the ambulance up there. And I was like, hey son, he was like, hey mom. I was like, you remember what happened? He was like, uh-uh. I was like, what you doing here? He was like, her, I'm just here for a checkup. Like his mind is gone. And that's why I understand why I can't make decisions for him they tell me you got to go to court go before a judge to get guardianship i'm like that's my son i gotta do all of that <sighs> well anyway that is enough because i feel my eyes getting a little wet and i don't have time to be crying today so look listen y'all that's the story on my son <laughs> i just don't have nothing else to let y'all in on so look listen y'all i'm done that's it that's all i have that's all i have so look listen i ain't talking about nothing i'll see y'all when i turn this camera back on so until next time until the next video bye bye hey let's rock, let's rock. can you not for me